We hear him there, that Labran Marku, the Minister of uh, Information, saying the distortions are disturbing and uh, there are discussions between uh, the lawmakers and uh, the Ministry of Finance on this particular one. Let me just give you an idea of uh, this particular budget. This is a budget, some people are saying that it's better than what we had in 2013. Remember, in October of 2012 was when the minister actually presented the 2013 budget, but yet... It still came late. It was passed late in the year of 2013. And again, December 19, 2013 was when we saw the 2014 budget presented to the National Assembly. Again, what we are seeing is the late passage of uh, the budget. So, uh, take a look at what, uh, what is happening. In that particular budget, the approved 2014 budget is made up of statutory transfers of about 408.687 billion debt servicing of 712 billion, recurrent expenditure of 2.454 trillion, and capital expenditure of 1.119 trillion. That is how the budget looks like. But where? When will it be passed and what will happen? What is the implication to the Nigerian economy? Is that a point in time when Nigeria rebased the economy? Will this affect us in any way? And at a point in time when the nation is facing some challenges, how are we going to get by in this particular situation? Those are the naughty issues on this particular uh, one. Well, uh, I understand now that my guest is uh, back in our Abuja, studio, and you're just looking at the pictures of uh, the coordinating Minister of uh, Economy and the Minister of Finance, Okonjo Iweala, taking that particular budget uh, last year to the National Assembly. Dr. Karch, unfortunately, we lost you there. But just as you were saying, I just broke it down. Just our guests, I mean, our viewers can understand what we're talking about on this particular budget. Are you literally telling me that this particular budget and its late passage is the blame of the lawmakers and the National Assembly? It is not just a lawmaker problem. It is the truth about our transition. We are transiting from a dictatorship to a democracy where we want to be. There are people who are reacting to our democratic changes in violent forms. You are seeing the economic reactions. If it were before, nobody will talk. We wouldn't hear it. Politicians will rock deals under the table and Nigerians will lose. Today, we're having a government that's standing up for the Nigerian people and questioning the impropriety and this corruption, which our international development partners have complained against. So that's actually part of the problem that the present government is facing. And I believe the government needs commendation for what it's doing. You have a lot of politicians trying to create unnecessary problems within the monetary expansion by inserting things in the budget that, as you have said, has bloated the budget by 56 billion. There are also a lot more distortions in what they have inserted. So it makes sense that the Minister for Finance tries to look at what she put there, what she didn't put there, what came back as a matter of their fraudulent insertions, remove them so that the budget that the government has written for the people of Nigeria will be as the government seems fit to reward the people that voted the government into power. And I think Just this quickly, is what we've been missing quickly, in Dr. Democracy. Kach, um, let me quickly bring this in. Yes. Uh, what is the implication, if you will uh, tell us, about the late passage of a bill of a year that is uh, probably going to come after the fifth month? Where are we getting the money that we've been spending? Because for a layman, is that where, is the, where are those monies coming from when we've not passed the budget, which is supposed to be part of our law? The budget of a nation, when it's passed into law, is a law. And uh, where are we getting this money? Now, we've been spending uh, some illegal money here. No. We have not spent any illegal money. What we have done is the president and the government has followed a statute to organize and recognize pattern. The government can spend up to 50% of the budget of the past year just in anticipatory 
uh, correlation of events. So that's what the government has been doing. If you ask me, the people who suffer in this issue are the politicians who seek money quickly for them to start acting on intentions towards re-election. The government is doing well. The country is doing well. As you can see, our economy is strong. Our economy is doing well. And that's why at the World Economic Forum, our international development partners and other investors who believe there's a lot of profit to be made from Nigeria came and they seek for ways to plug in to the advantage so that they can also make money to Africa's biggest big money economy. Quickly tell me the implication. You've not told me uh, the implication of the late passage of the bill. Just quickly before we go into our next issue on the program. What is the implication of the late passage? The implication of the late passage is that it undermines business. A lot of people don't get the money they will get paid because they are told that uh, we can't pay. Government owes us and we've not been paid because the budget has not been passed. And this comes up everywhere you see people talking about business. It's not very good for business. It's not very good for confidence within the economy. It's also not good for business planning. I believe these implications are very, very dire, and we shouldn't allow them. But of course, since Nigeria is right now going through an evolution and at a fundamental historical point in its history, all this can be understood that we are going through a transition. All right. So very, very, very good. Just quickly away from the issues of the economy. Let me take you straight away into the issue of security. Fight. A lot of things are happening. Like you saw uh, yesterday, the president uh, alongside some other presidents from neighboring countries, Chad, Cameroon, Niger, all of them, they were in Paris and they sat with uh, the president of, uh, of France, and uh, they were discussing the insurgency that are deeply eats part of Nigeria's north and is also affecting, it's gradually becoming a regional problem. Give me your thoughts about what you think on the issue of the intervention of foreign countries, I mean countries, uh, helping Nigeria in this instance. I believe that that is the right thing to do. Of the powers who are speaking, of all nations, none is as important in this issue as the French. The French are the colonial masters to the Cameroons, to the Niger, and also to Chad. Don't forget, there are no fundamental problems in Nigeria between Muslims and Christians. There are no problems between the North and the South. What Nigeria has is a West African problem with the ethnic Fulanese. And the Fulanese do live massively in up to eight different countries in Africa. Don't forget, today, Nigeria faced problems in the bush with Fulani headmen. Also, in the political space, you have these issues. So we need to honestly address this crisis by talking to the colonial master, which is France, that has control over those countries. If we can be able to talk to France, and France will be able to stop those who come from across our borders, they will get Cameroon to cooperate with Nigeria, get Niger to cooperate with Nigeria, get Chad to cooperate with Nigeria. And that is the beginning of the end of this insurgency. All right, very good. Uh, tell me about, about what you make of President Jonathan's response when a journalist asked him about why he has not visited Chibok. That's a very big question on the minds of Nigeria. Are you satisfied with what his response was at that particular summit? Chibok is good. Chibok is Nigeria. But what Nigeria has is an internal civil insurrection. The most important thing for us to do is to stop this crisis. And since the Fulanese who come from across the border to cause this, have the French as the colonial masters of the countries where these issues come from, it makes sense that the president must go to France and become part of that impromptu meeting so that we will be able to get the French to put pressure on the Cameroons, on Chad and Niger, so that we can stop this crisis that we are having. 
You need to understand first what we're having. We have an internal problem with our former colonial masters, the ethnic Fulanese. So the honest that you approach this issue, the better for us. All right, thank you so very much. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Dr. Katch Ananuju, I must appreciate you for uh, your thoughts on those issues. That Dr. Katch Ananuju is an economics and a public affairs analyst. Well, still on the program, I have uh, a former presidential candidate of the Nigeria Conscious Party, Dele Mohamed, who will be joining me on the program later on after this break, and we shall be sharing thoughts on the issues of how we can take this nation forward, considering the challenges the nation faces at the moment. It's Politics Today with me, Shion Wakimbalo on Channels Television. We go for a short break, and when we return, more discussion that you are interested in right here. Stay with us.